Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to basically kind of get better performance out of your Lego parts without buying anything that's expensive. So all you would need is a 9 volt battery and one of these connectors and like something that connects, just a power function connector also. It can be connected to anything. So, like, you know, um, like, you should do this because it, for standard, um, functions, the motor only is, okay, let me just get something that will show the speed of this motor, and this is going to be how fast it spins right now. So... You can't really see it because the camera's 30 FPS, but you, like if you kind of slow mo it, um, each frame, it will like you can like calculate how much RPM. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'm pretty sure it's like maybe 300 or something. So, so I'm gonna do the battery. So. This bad again. Alright, let's unplug this. Uh, okay, I'll just um, put in the battery wire. So it's spinning right now, so for me, it feels a little bit faster. And this battery is not completely full, but if it were full, it would be a, feel a little bit faster. So if we just kind of do something here. Don't want to squish the wires. All right. Uh, wait, let me get out the motors on. I don't know if you can hear me, but you probably can. Let me just set my mouth closer to the microphone. So, um, the this motor seems to be going faster than this motor. That that one. And um, I had to take this one down because it was well. It just keeps moving around like this, but more violently, and it fell down. But yeah, so this motor is a little bit faster than this motor, so... So if you want performance, like maybe hook up a train motor to a 9 volt battery, you can make a really fast RC car. You can actually hook this up to an IR receiver. Uh, okay. Let me just pretend that never happened. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Alright, that happened. So, you can hook this up to anything. I would recommend hooking it up to an IR receiver. And, like, just hooking up to the pins and adding a switch. I did that. It works perfectly. I put on one of my cars. And it went really, like... The performance was way better than when I used this battery pack. And the, also, another good, like, good thing, like a thumbs up on using a 9 volt battery, is that it's lighter. It's easier to replace, so I can just, like, you know, just take out the thing and just put it back in. And it's basically, you save more money. Let me just get this tape off the table. I forgot what else I was gonna say about this, but yeah, just the battery life may not be as good, so I bought some rechargeable batteries. This one isn't rechargeable, uh, it's just one I found nearby me, and yeah. So, let me just show you how to do it. Just put the wires into anything, so alright, I'll just do the IR receiver. It will work. Guaranteed, the green light will turn on over here, and you can use your controller. But if you do it this way, like connect to the well, first let me tell you about these pins. So, this is 9 volt over here, this is ground, I think this is C1, this is C2. So, if you want to make your own battery pack, you would have to connect 9 volt and C2, or C1, I forgot which one, but pretty sure it's C2. And then C1 in ground if you want to make a battery pack for IR receivers and 
if you want to do direct motor contact. But right now, I would show you how to do IR receiver because if you want to make an RC car, you would do it like that. But the way I wired the motor up was do it, do the red wire right here and the black wire over here on the top. So first, um, I would show you the IR receiver. So you get your IR receiver cable and flip it upside down so you can maybe connect more IR receivers. And you would go and get a flathead screwdriver. I would recommend 1.2 millimeters or maybe a little smaller. And then you would go up to here and go to the 9 volt, which is the one here, so it will be directly parallel to the bottom, so it will be right here, and you would push down right here, there will be, okay, <laughs> alright, this thing is bad at focusing, come on, oh uh, no, no AAFE, uh, alright, this, this camera is awful, but I'll just try zooming in. So, what? Oh my gosh. Uh, Alright, so, I'll just demo it on this side. If I can focus, yeah. So, once you push down, a little space will pop up on the bottom, right here. So, what I found out is easiest to do is, like, put on a flat surface and just, like, move it this way. And just get your wire in it. So, uh, this will, if you want to make this permanent, I would recommend taping it down. Maybe not hot gluing it, because, well, not really permanent, but like, if you were going to be using it a lot, like, like as if you were using this car for like a car project or something. So, I got mine open. Let me just. Yeah, get this in the light and push down. You can see that little open space. So, once you've got that, you would put your wire in. So, I'll try to do it. It's a little bit difficult on the first time you do it. But once you do it a lot, you'll get used to it. So, you would move it back and put your wire there. And then, yeah, got that first wire connected. See, you got basically jammed in the middle connector and then get your black wire and do the same thing on the other side so yep got that so right now both wires are connected all right so we get a nine volt battery right here Just connect that in green light will pop up and that means the IR receiver is on. See. This you could go and attach a switch to this, like what I said earlier. All you would have to do is snip the wire in half and you would get a switch. It would if it has two prongs, just connect one side to the two prongs and then like one yeah, basically connect the solder or if it's a big switch, you just put it through and just wrap it and like um, heat shrink tube it. And another way, like if you have a three prong switch, you would use the metal prong, the middle prong, not metal. Well, they are metal, but the middle prong and and then the, any one that's next to it. Just try not to connect it to the third one that you're not going to use. And then also heat shrink, heat shrink it. Or use electrical tape. I forgot to mention you can use it on the other one. Just electrical tape it, just protect it so you wouldn't need to resolder it again. I did that, and then, um, well, after you're done doing that, or like just first hot glue it. I keep forgetting to hot glue my stuff. Because it will fall apart and you have to do all the hard stuff for the soldering later. So, yeah. Alright. Okay, I think that's it for the video. And, yeah. Bye.